we did mention that this month is Black History Month and a noted Caribbean lady from Trinidad made a visit to Egypt, one of the African countries, and has some startling revelations for us. But first, look. A quick look at Egypt. Joycelyn Alexander, on January 24th, came back from Egypt after her visit. She dropped in at the Culture Share Studios and I took the opportunity to speak with her and I first asked her what she had to tell black people about her visit. First of all, I'm going to say do not expect to see desert and camel as a lot of people painted the picture. That's, that's what you expect to see when you get to Egypt. First of all, a lot of our people do not know that Egypt is in Africa, so let's make it clear. Egypt is in Africa and Egypt is alive and well. It's very informative, there's a lot of information. First of all, civilization started from the Nile in Egypt. And there are two things that really, well, first of all, I was very proud because I learned so much of the history, the culture, and everything was documented so that I can see. But again, on the other hand, it made me very angry and angry because the history was distorted. The European, and it is safe to say because I did not write history, it is written to see how it was distorted by them. Mainly, they fail to realize or to accept that black people is so, what should I say, knowledgeable to be able to present art in the form and fashion that it has been presented for over 4,000 years. They broke the noses off some of the statues, the mouth off to distort African features, because black people are not supposed to be so intelligent to know how to do these things. For a good example is Nafetiti, that so many people have been wearing Nafetiti on a chain, and she has these sharp European features. By the way, they are Africans with also sharp features, but they present Nafetiti to have sharp features, straight nose, very thin lips, when in fact Nafetiti as presented on the wall that is engraved by the Egyptian over 4,000 years ago, to have full lips, high cheekbone, and wrong eyes, and also curly hair, or kinky hair, as they would say. I mean, that's a very forceful comment you're making. So what you're actually saying is that the European history, as we know it, has been a big lie? You can quote me absolutely correct. And that what made me very angry, because not only did they destroy, they even take chisel and chisel the stomach of most of the statues, the faces, and I can call names. Why? Because they left their trademark as though to take credit as though they did it. When I say they did it, not destroy it, but they were the one that is the creator of all this. And it is Alexander, the so-called great, I don't know how great, in what form they mean, Napoleon, and it's another British, I do not recall his name at the moment, but it's all written, it's all documented, because they carved their names into the walls. And they also set fire into some of the tombs, and the smoke just went up, and the soot is all on the ceiling, and now as the soot is falling off, you can see the gold lining and the beauty of all the antiquities and the way everything was all carved into the wall by the Egyptian. So, I mean, what you're saying then is that when a black man goes to school to learn history, he's taught European history. Yes. So what you're saying he is actually being brainwashed. Absolutely correct. By the white man's curriculum? Absolutely correct. So then where are we going? Nowhere. And the truth is written. You just cannot believe everything you read or even see on TV. When I said it is written, it all depends on who it's written by. It's a good idea, though, to read from different authors and compare. But there's no substitute for experience if you can afford to take that trip, which it could become made affordable so that everyone can go. See for yourself, the writing is on the wall. I was there, I took my own video, I took my own still, and I'm making it a study. And what I'm doing now, I wish I'd done it 25 years ago. Technically speaking, not everybody would be able to go to Egypt to see for themselves. On your visit 
to Egypt. I mean, did you see anything or were there people down there who were trying to record uh, in the form of picture? I mean, you did some video shots, but you're only one person. But uh, were there people doing something that um, would benefit black people so that they can come to places like America, the Caribbean or wherever to educate the black people as to actually what's happening? Well, first of all, I must say are back a little when you said most of them maybe cannot afford. I believe anyone can do anything they want to do if they really want to do it. We spend a lot of money each day on soda pop, on potato chips, and a whole lot of other things that I don't even want to mention. And if you budget yourself and you put a little aside and you check different tours and you compare and you save, you can do it. Joyce and Alexander are talking about her trip to Egypt. She'll be back again next week as part of Black History Month to tell us more about that visit to Africa.